Good, Good morning, morning, New Hope West. West. Welcome to church on this beautiful Palm Sunday. My name is Uilani. My name is Christopher Vasquez. And we're so happy that you're joining us this morning yeah. for church. We have a wonderful worship experience prepared, and we're so excited for what God is going to do. So we want to invite you to invite someone to join us for service. And let us know where you're tuning in from in the comment section. We would love to greet you. You are such an amazing part of what God is doing here at New Hope West. And speaking of New Hope West, Chris here is leading our Spanish translation and interpretation yeah. ministry, yeah, our sure. Spanish ministries. Yeah, Can you tell us sure. a little bit about that? Definitely. So um, my name again is Christopher Vasquez. For those of you who have not seen me here before, uh, I do Spanish translation. We do Spanish translation here at New Hope West. Uh, we also do Spanish interpretation on Sundays at our 1130 service. Mm -hmm. And so if you or a family member uh, wants to join us mm -hmm. and says, oh my gosh, but I can't do with the English. Well, yeah. we got Spanish. We do. And so you get to hear it simultaneously, live. Yes. Um, it's from pretty impressive. In -house. Yeah. I have to say it's pretty impressive. Chris does an incredible job. Um, <laughs> you know, being able to listen to something mm -hmm. and interpret mm -hmm. it at the same time is actually very advanced. I've sat yeah. in the studio with him and I'm just like blown away at just the quality and, um, you know, just how animated you are. It really, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. nothing lost in translation, yeah. literally. And so it's yeah. really cool. For sure. And I think the greatest thing about doing it here at New Hope West, so if you're an interpreter and want to also jump on board, mm -hmm. is we have the technology to allow us to just yeah kind of immerse into yes. the service itself so we can observe the pastor or the the speaking pastor and then yeah. we interpret for them because we can see everything happening yes. inside the house mm -hmm. therefore it allows us the interpreters to actually emulate properly yeah. um, so we won't skip a beat <laughs> we will be hard on heart with the uh, speaking pastor yes. and so rest assured you will get a wonderful experience if you're listening in Spanish. Amen. And so it's truly our heart to reach the world with yeah. the gospel. And though we can't offer it online necessarily, mm -hmm. if you do know someone who is in town in the Eugene area, we would yeah. love to have them come out. Now, Easter is only one week away. And so just yes, to give is. you a little more from the Spanish side, translation side, some information. If you are with our Spanish speaking community and mm -hmm. want to come to service, yeah. when will we be offering translation? Because we have six identical services, but Spanish interpretation will be yeah. provided at which services? Yeah, so kind of to bring everybody uh, home and build a bit bigger community so we can get to know mm -hmm. each other better. Uh, we've designed it that Saturday we'll be interpreting at seven, the seven o'clock mm -hmm. service. And then on Sunday, we will be interpreting at our usual 1130 service. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to be joining us online, we have all of our services streaming, streaming online live. Yep. And so Saturday, please join us. Plan Plan to join us, invite a friend, yeah, 3, 5, and 7 p.m. on Saturday, and 7.30, 9.30 and 11.30 mm -hmm. on Sunday morning. And so please be inviting, be praying yeah. for the harvest because we want to see God just reach Plant a those ton seeds. of people, yeah, for uh, bring sure. in a harvest, mm -hmm. and we just can't wait to see all that he does. Yep, let's partner together Let's partner on that. together. Well, with that, today is Palm Sunday. Our youth ensemble is leading us in worship, and Pastor Wayne has a powerful word just reminding us about our core value of everyone, Christian and non-Christian mm. alike, is valuable to God and therefore Amen. valuable to us. And so we're going to dive in. Let's head downstairs and worship together.
Welcome everybody to New Hope. Let's stand together. We're approaching Easter week coming up. So we will be having six services. So please take a look at, by the way, on our app, we have a new little twist to it. You can actually go and check on the service that you're wanting to go to, and it'll tell you if it's full or not full. We've got plenty of room, so that way you can kind of see which service would be the best for you. So go to the New Hope app, and if you haven't downloaded it, just go to the app store. It's free, and uh, you can check the services to see how full they are, etc. So that would be great. All right? All right. Make sure you do that. All right, turn to somebody and say, happy week of Easter. Go ahead, just welcome them. And in just a moment, we are going to have our youth lead us in worship. The oldest is 16. Are you 16, 17? 17 you're 17. Oh, that's old. You're a geezer. Uh, and how old are you, Tuila? 16, Ellie? 40? 14? 16 and they're going to lead us in worship would you welcome the lord and our youth as they lead us to the throne here we go church come on good morning new hope I'm so glad you're here let's praise god this morning Is 
so kind as to take a hold of the person's hand next to you on either side. It doesn't matter from what venue you've come or the background or the amount of mistakes or triumphs. When we come before the throne of God, always remember that the land is always level at the cross. The ground is always level at the throne of God. And so we stand before him as beloved kids. So we come to him as our loving father. Let's pray. Father, we come to you as your children. We've come from different pasts, different backgrounds, different highs and lows and problems and triumphs, successes and failures. But as we stand, we feel your acceptance, your forgiveness and love. 
And Lord, we know that there's a that we have our part to be people of repentance, people of humility, and that we want to be. We ask that you'd continue to work in us and through us, oh God. So we ask that you would mold us, mend us when need be, that you'd nuance us and shape us, edit us if need be, and revise. But Lord, when we leave here, may we leave differently from when we arrived so that we'll look more and more like you. Change us from the inside out. We give you permission to do that even if we don't even know what you're doing. Go for it. Just go for it. Because sometimes we don't even know what to ask for. But you know what we need most. So Lord, we give you permission. And now, Lord, would you bless the one on either side of us, the one on our left and the one on our right. Work in their lives too. Let the breath of the Holy Spirit give new life, new energy, new inspiration. Lord, we thank you for that. Encourage these on either side so that we might begin to shine, as you said, as lights in the world. Increase our lumens today so that when we go into a darkened world, it won't stay that way. We ask now your blessings, your guidance, in the matchless and amazing name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we all say together, amen and amen and amen. Turn to two, three people, give them a handshake and a big hug and say, welcome, welcome, welcome to New Hope. What a wonderful time in worship. And worship. it's such a joy to my heart to see our next generation leading us in such a special time as that. Amen. Hey, if you're just tuning in, my name is Uilani. I'm Chris Vasquez. And we want to remind you again that Easter is just yes, it one is. week oh away. My God. We're so excited. <laughs> it's going to be a phenomenal time. And if you're in the area, we want to invite you to join us join in us. person. Be Six here. Come identical on. services yep. and two offered Spanish translation mm -hmm. services. Sábado a las 7 y domingo a las 11 y media. And also our kids program is going to have a phenomenal time mm -hmm. with crafts and a powerful time of worship yeah. and a lesson and even an egg hunt. Así que tráete a tus hijos, no te vengas solo porque hay programa para ti y para ellos también. And so if you're planning on joining us, we want to invite you. Best way to park is down at Churchill High mm -hmm. School to catch one of our VIP shuttles yep. with door-to-door -door service. Yep. En transporte directo desde el estacionamiento de Churchill High School hasta la puerta del santuario así que no te lo puedes perder porque es especial para ti so we pray that we will see you here and if not we are streaming all of our services online live so yep. we can't wait for what God is about to do well let's head back downstairs let's for, go some, for some announcements, announcements yeah. and let's hear about all that is coming up at New Hope West Good morning, New Hope West, and happy Palm Sunday. Why don't you turn to somebody next to you and give them a Palm Five for Palm Sunday. <laughs> hey, well, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Keanu. I oversee our high school ministry here at New Hope West. I'm going to highlight just a few announcements for you this morning. And our first one is for all the ladies in the house this morning. The Women of Hope group are having a springtime tea on Saturday, April 13th. So we invite you to invite your friends, your family members to join them uh, for a great day of worship, of fellowship. And there's also going to be a guest speaker by the name of Bethany Bravery. So take a look on the app to sign up and for more information. Also, the following week on April 17th, they'll be kicking off their Women of Hope Bible study and they'll be in the book of Philippians. So join them for that. The next announcement is that, did you know that Easter is just one week away? Come on, somebody. One week from Easter. 
which also means you have one more week to invite your friends and your family. So grab some invite cards on your way out and be praying about who you need to invite to Easter this year. As Pastor Wayne says, some people are just one invite away from the greatest decision they could ever make in their life. So let's be people to invite, 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 and plant those seeds of faith. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Also, if you take a look at our app, as Pastor Wayne mentioned, we just released our New Hope Easter Planner. And what you can do is go into the app, click on Easter, and you'll see some service times. We have services on Saturday and Sunday. Six services, they're all identical. You choose which service you're planning to go to, and it'll tell you how popular or how packed that service is going to be so you can plan accordingly with those that you're going to invite. Also, on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday at 7.30, if you join us, there's going to be free Christmas. Krispy Kreme Donuts. Who loves Krispy Kremes? You can never go wrong with a donut in the morning. So join us for that. Just the 730 service will have those donuts. Lastly, we wanted to invite our family to do church as a team this Easter and to be praying and thinking about where you can be serving um, for the Easter weekend. There's so many opportunities. There's times and places that you can jump in. And if it's just one service or if it's just a couple services, uh, we invite you to join us so you can stop by the iServe table or sign up on the app as well. Well, that's all the announcements I have. I'm going to welcome up Pastor Wayne for some tithes and offerings. Thank you, Keanu. He's our high school pastor. Josiah is our junior high pastor, so if you have children of that age, let them know. So it'll be going Wednesday nights to high school, and we're going to move the junior high to Sunday morning so that, because they don't have cars, and so mom and dad can bring them Sunday morning. They'll have their own separate service. Wednesday will be high school, and it'll be stellar, so it'll be great. Looking forward to that coming up. And then camp is coming up, too, so we'll be planning for that. Ushers, would you prepare to receive the tithes and the offerings? Would you prepare your hearts to give? As I said, we're going to continue in our series called Radix. Today we're going to talk about the value of people before they even come to Christ. Sometimes we say, well, if they're not Christians, like, ah. Uh. But I want you to know that God values people way before they even made that decision. God valued you and me. So today we're going to talk about the church as a hospital and a boot camp. Hospital. And a boot camp. But before that, we're going to pray, and then you're going to have a beautiful song sung by these uh, young people, and that uh, talks about how God loves us even before we said yes. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you so much for loving us even before we make a decision to receive you. Even when we were yet rejecting of you, you loved us. Help us to do the same, especially as we approach Easter. The day that uh, on Friday that you died for our sins and on Sunday you rose again and live for us forevermore. Lord, that, that is a celebration that we want to have as a, our festival of the year because it reminds us of your goodness even yet while we were yet sinners. We ask your blessings, Lord. Thank you so much for the gifts that are given. Thank you for the hearts that are behind them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead, ushers. Let's listen. You got a voice in your head, the same old guilt and regret you heard a thousand times before. After the choices you made, you're waiting for me to say. Couldn't love you anymore. The enemy has lied to you, but listen to me, is the truth. I couldn't love you anymore than I do right now. There's no way I wouldn't go to get to you, my child. Take a look at the cross, then you'll know it for sure.
They're all right, aren't they? My. Hey, say thank you also to Christina Kiriakos for coaching them vocally, etc. We have great teachers. Great teachers. You got a bright future ahead of us. But would you take out your notes as we continue in our series called Radix, which actually means roots. And because we're approaching Easter, we wanted to circle back to many of you who maybe this is your first year in this church. So we wanted to lay again the foundations upon which the church is founded. We have nine core values. We have a mission statement, but we have nine core values. And it's sort of the spirit with which we carry on our church. It's the driving motivations behind it. And so we want to talk a little bit about that today. But first, I want to give you a funny story. This is a, tells you kind of like not everything is as it seems. Um, uh, there's a homeless man that died, and the funeral director said, we got to give him at least a burial. I, he doesn't have much money, but let's give him a good burial. And, and so they found somewhat of an obscure cemetery because the funding was low, and it was out in the rural area. And uh, there wasn't really going to be a funeral, just a burial site. But he wanted some music. The funeral director just enjoyed music. So there was a guy that played violin and said he'll play Amazing Grace and for $200. So the funeral director said, that's great. So he paid him in advance. Well, the funeral wasn't, I mean, the burial wasn't until a couple of weeks later. So finally the day comes and he, he gets the direction to this obscure cemetery, punches it into his GPS, and the GPS takes him way out in Nana land somewhere. And so he's looking for this obscure cemetery, this violinist, and he can't find it. And so finally, after rerouting several times and recalibrating, it takes him to this rural area, and there's a barn out there. And the, he said, I remember him saying something about a barn. So he pulls in. Now he's an hour late. And by this time, the hearse is gone. The funeral director's gone. Uh, they, there was only two diggers there with the hole, and already it looked like the uh, cement lid was on Already, and they were sitting down, their legs dangling into the hole, and they're eating lunch. And so he pulls up and says, Oh no, I'm so late. They're already gone. Well, they already paid me 200 bucks. I better play. So he just stands in front of that little hole and, and then starts playing Amazing Grace. And the two diggers are looking at him like, Wow, that's so cool. And he figured because he already got paid, and yet he's late, he's got to put extra passion into it. So he puts emotion and passion into this. And pretty soon, these two diggers are weeping. I mean, it is so touching. They're crying, they're wiping their eyes. And finally, the guy's done. And he puts his violin away, and he's going to his car when he overhears the two diggers talking. The first one says to the other, he says, man, no one has ever done anything like this before. And the second guy goes, yeah, and we've been putting in septic tanks for 20 years. <laughs> All things are not as they seem. And sometimes churches aren't as they seem. Sometimes we think churches are one way, maybe they're not, and we're going to talk about that. And let's take a look at, right at the top of our notes, core value number one. Would you read it with me, and it'll come up on the board as well. Go. We believe that every person, Christian and alike, is valuable to God and to his kingdom because people are eternally valuable to God they are to us. There's only one of God's creation that has eternity into that DNA, and that's you and me. It's the humans. It's us, people after his image. It's not so with plants or animals, but it is, maybe with horses, but, but <laughs> it's for people especially, especially. And so because they're eternally valuable to God that he actually put eternity in their hearts, in fact, the scriptures is that God has put eternity in the hearts of every man every woman, they're very, very valuable to God. However, not all things are as it seems, so I want to ask you this question. What are most churches, what do they resemble most? And I want to give you five multi-choice answers. Do churches most resemble care homes, where they just take care of active senior citizens, or a country club? Or maybe a hospice where we just make people comfortable till, till they close the door. Is it a hospital or is it a boot camp? Well, the correct answer is both four and five. 
Today, I want to talk to you about the hospital and the boot camp. Some people ask me, Wayne, is a New Hope a place where non-Christians are welcome? Well, not only are they welcome, it's most of the reason we exist. Because if non-Christians were not valuable to God, none of us would be here. Because <laughs> we were all there. Every single one of us. In fact, the scripture says this in Romans 3.23. It says this. All, in fact, read it with me. Go. Go. All have sinned. How many all. have sinned and fall short of the glory of God? You know, I looked up that word all in the Greek, did some etymology and looked up the word all, and you know what it means? All. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every single one of us. There's no one excluded. We've all sinned. We all started as non-Christians, and I call them pre-Christians. Saul. Saul of Tarsus, the one who wrote half of the New Testament, well, God did, but through him, half of the New Testament was penned. When did God call Saul to become Paul? When did God call him to serve him? Before he received Christ or after? It was before, wasn't it? It was on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. When we rejected him and when we were far from him, I was still valuable to him. Every single one of us is valuable regardless of how many addictions a person has or problems because they're made in the image of Christ. Even though it's mutated, toxified, deteriorated, corrupted, there's still that breath that God gave to that person and that person's valuable until the Lord closes the door. Until then, we get to pray for, hope for, believe that they're valuable. I was with a guy some years ago and he was probably... 80 pounds. He had lost every muscle fiber in his body, which was skin and bones. He was dying of AIDS. His whole lifestyle was an alternate lifestyle, and he had gotten AIDS, and it was killing him. He was in the, in the hospital bed in the hospital, and I went in there to pray for him. And I didn't know him from Adam, but I just went in. I saw him, and I said, can I pray for you? He looked at me and said, are you a preacher? I said, yeah, I am. He said, what could be worse than dying from AIDS? I said, dying without Jesus. Big tears came to his eyes, and he said, you're right. I said, can I pray for you, please? And right before he died, he received Jesus. And I thought, every single person, Christian and non-Christian, is valuable to Jesus up to the very end. Every single person, that's a core value that we have here at New Hope. Now, some people say, well, they, they got to get their act together first. Remember this, you cannot get your act together outside of the embrace of Jesus. It's impossible. On your own muscle, your own strength, your own ability, you can't get your life together. In fact, the book of Corinthians says the natural man cannot accept the things of the Spirit of God. It is impossible. You need to come within the embrace of God, and His power starts to transform you, which means you have to come in when you are yet unsaved. I say it this way, God loves you just like you are, but he loves you too much to let you stay that way. And when you come into his embrace, you're starting to get changed from glory to glory. That's why your heart has to be open and willing for him. But people are going to come in here that don't look like you, don't act like you, don't smell like you. But so were we when we came in and God began to change us. And it's that patience, that grace that we need to have as a church that says it's okay because there will be a change. But for now, we get to be all right with that. I know for me, when I came in to the, to the Lord, I, I needed help. I was helpless. In fact, the scripture says it this way. Let's read it here on, on the wall in Romans 5. Would you read it? Go. When we were utterly helpless, okay, try it. When we, because you guys were silent, I thought, what happened? The <laughs> church disappeared. They were, okay, go. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is a Especially good, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us when? That's amazing. That's amazing. 
You see, Christian and non-Christians are valuable to God. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All of the king's horses and all of the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. But the king himself could. So the king put aside his regal robe and took off his golden crown, bejeweled with some of the rarest stones, and came, picked up the pieces of Humpty Dumpty, and put him back together with love. Now, the second part I, I made up myself. <laughs> yeah. But the first part, yeah, that's, that's right. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again, but the king himself could. And that's why we call Jesus King Jesus. Jesus never said the church would give you forgiveness. He said he would. He never said a church would heal you. He said he would. And so as you come to this place, you come to Jesus, and he's the one that puts us together. You see, God promises to mend a broken life, but in order for him to do so, you must give him all the pieces. You cannot hold any back. And so he invites us to come to a place like this. Paul the Apostle even said it this way. He said, Jesus came to the world to save sinners, among who, whom I am the worst of all. So you know, when Paul came to the Lord, he needed a hospital. He didn't, he didn't need a pity party. He, did, he didn't need a country club. He didn't need a bless me club. He didn't need to just become part of the society of the lame where everyone just co-commiserated with one another. He came to be healed. And so it is with this church. Let me talk to you about two aspects of this church, a hospital and a boot camp. First of all, hospital. And that happened with me when I came to Christ and went to a church, and it was a hospital. But I want you to know that when people come to this church as a hospital, because it's both a hospital and a boot camp, they, when people go to any hospital, they bring with them their sickness. You ever notice that? Yeah, they bring with them their addiction. They bring with them their unhealth. And if a church is a hospital, people are going to come in here and they're going to bring their unhealth doesn't mean we endorse it. It does not mean that we accept it and agree with it. No. It means that you are going to meet Jesus and he's going to transform you. But there's one thing you must do. You cannot look for an excuse or to be blessed in your lack of change. You have to be willing to say, I need help. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't want to do that. I love the story of Cassius Clay before he was called Muhammad Ali, the great fighter. He was sitting in first class in an airplane when the uh, flight attendant came and said, Mr. Uh, Muhammad, uh, you need to put your seatbelt on. He said, my name is Muhammad Ali. I am Superman, and Superman don't need no seatbelt. <laughs> she said, I'm sorry, that's just a FAA regulation. I, my name is Muhammad Ali. I am Superman. A man and Superman don't need no seat built. She said, Excuse me. And she went back to get the head flight attendant, the purser, and said, Muhammad Ali's there and he won't put on his seat belt. She said, I'll take care of him. She went back there and she said, Mr. Ali, put on your seat belt. He said, My name is Muhammad Ali. I am Superman. And Superman don't need no seat belt. She said, Superman don't need no airplane. Put on your seat belt. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we think we're Superman. That how I live is the way I should live. Nobody's going to say anything. The Lord is saying, no, no, no. You ain't Superman. And so when you come to a church like this or any church, it's a hospital. A hospital. And God is going to change you. What if you went to a hospital and said, I've got a fast-growing cancer and I can't live very long, the doctor goes, it's okay. Other people have cancer. Come in here, have an ice cream cone. Yeah, we just we got a group of cancer dyers right here. And we just play bridge and we play pinochle. We have fun. It's like, what? Uh, what? 
I've got a real bad flu or I've got a bacterial infection. It's all right. Just come in here. There's a movie on. Watch. It's like, what kind of doctor is that? And yet we want churches to be like that. We want churches to just take us as we are and just make us feel better, just better, just medicate us, give us some morphine derivatives so that we can feel better about ourselves. And any good doctor would go, oh, no, no. <laughs> There's a story. Uh, my mind is deranged, so I just have all these stories. Is that all right? You have time for another one? <laughs> this is only second service, so we have time. But <laughs> so this guy comes into the doctor, and uh, the doctor says, uh, we checked all your symptoms, etc., and I have some bad news and worse news. The guy goes, what? Yeah. Well, give me the bad news. He said, well, uh, you have 24 hours left to live. The guy goes, what could be worse than that? The doctor said, I forgot to tell you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if we expect a church to be a deranged hospital, people die. And we just medicate them to make them feel better about dying with a Christless eternity. Are you kidding me? Is that love? You see, the world has, they, they believe two Two lies, as it were. And the two lies kind of, well, they kind of go like this. Number one, if you disagree with someone's lifestyle, that means you hate them. That's a lie. See, that's two lies our society believes. If you disagree with someone's lifestyle, that means you hate them. Here's the other lie. To love somebody means you have to agree with everything they believe. Really? What kind of hospital would that be? Yet our society has believed that and is telling people to do the same. Let's see where you find yourself in this next scripture. All right? This is not for somebody else. This is for you. See if you can find yourself in this next scripture. It'll come up. Go. Do you not... Go ahead and read it with me. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived... Neither the sexually immoral, idolaters, or adulterers, homosexuals, thieves, or the greedy, nor those habitually drunk, nor verbal abusers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Before you get too guilty, read the next one. Go. Such were some of you, but you were, but you were, but you were justified in the name of the Lord. Can you see the hope there? But I bet all of us can find ourselves in one of those. We were all there. But you'll notice that God puts them all into one package so that we're not comparing with one another. We're all there. But we can't pull one out and say, this is okay and that's not okay. The Lord, no, 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 no. This is how you were, but you were washed. You came to the hospital. You came to the right place. Otherwise, churches will become hospices where we just medicate people spiritually so they feel better until they die in a Christless eternity. And we think, well, that's love. Is it really? See, God loves us so much that he loves us just like we are, but he loves us too much to let us stay that way. He died that we might have life. And so as we come, we have to remember we ain't Superman. And God is going to start to transform us. William Booth is the founder of the Salvation Army, which you've heard of today. They do great work. But back in the early 1900s, he said something. It's almost prophetic about churches today. He said this, and I quote, The day will come when the chief danger of the churches will be, spir will be spirituality without the Holy Spirit, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, politics without God, and heaven without hell. Pretty prophetic, isn't it? And that's exactly what's happening today. See, a lot of times we come to church and we want God's blessings, but we don't want God. We want God's favor, but we don't want to follow. We want God's prosperity, but we don't want his presence. And it's not available. So as we come to a church, remember that the church of today, that's a biblical church, will be both a hospital and secondly, a boot camp. Now, not everybody likes boot camps because it's going to require something of us. 
It's going to require us to dig deep sometimes, to be honest, to be accountable, to, to say like David did in Psalm 139, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and see if there be any wicked way. It's both a hospital and a boot camp. And for some people, it'll be a hospital, a boot camp, but there'll be seasons in your life where it'll turn back into a hospital. You'll go through some things, some setbacks, some hurts, and you'll go back to a hospital and then a boot camp. And it's okay. That'll happen several times in our lives where the church will be both a hospital and a boot camp. And you'll come here and you'll find God working with you and working with me. In fact, let's read Matthew 4, 21, and we're going to take a look at a word called mending. Let's read this out loud. Go. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. They were in the boat with Zebedee, their father. What were they doing? And he... Yeah, it's in the midst, even though you're not already there, there's going to be times in the middle of your being mended, God will call you. Well, I'm not ready yet. Mm. Oh, start before you're ready. When he calls, you're ready. Yeah, but, 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 but. Mm. There's going to be times God's going to mend you. The word mending is a Greek word, kartetismon. It's a Greek word. And it's also found in Ephesians 4 when it says pastors are given for the equipment of the saints for the work of the ministry. Pastors are given to the equipping of the saints, like a boot camp. The word equipping is the same exact word, cartatismo. Over here, it's mending. Over here, it's equipping. Why? Because fishermen on the Sea of Galilee, when they throw their nets in, it gets caught on the snags and the rocks at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee. And when they pull it up, often it will get ripped. And they are in the boats. They have to mend it or put it back together. But then when they are, have mended their nets, what do they use the nets for? To pile them up? To say, I've got more mended nets than you do? Do we, do we count them, calculate them? Do we display them on the wall? No, we don't. Here's what we do. When the nets are mended, what do you do with them? Yeah, you throw them back in the water. Same word. There's going to be times you're going to come to the church as a hospital and God's going to mend you in your marriage, in your mind, in your lack of confidence, in your guilt. There's going to be tears because you and I walk the streets of this city and our community and you're going to get torn. Marriages will get broken. And you're going to come to this church and you're going to feel in the midst of a sermon, God's mending you, saying, it's okay, honey, I got you. I got you on this one. You're okay. I will help you. My grace will sustain you. And you'll feel God mend you. And that tear will start to heal. But then there's other times where God is going to equip and charge you because he's about to throw you back out. If you just come to be mended and mended some more and mended some more, pretty soon you won't have any eyelets left in your net to catch anything. You'll just be a mended net, and I just want to stay in the fisherman's workshop. But that's not what God mends nets for. He mends nets in order to equip them to go fishing again. And so there's a purpose in your life because the people out there have only one hope, and that's us. There's an old story that says, when the Lord ascended, he gave the gospel, the message of good news to the disciples and the angels this is a fictitious story, but it has a good moral to it. The angel said to Jesus, you're giving the only message that'll save mankind to those people that are a bunch of failures? They deny you. They run from you. They have no idea. You're, you're leaving the greatest message in the universe with those guys there? They're clowns. Don't you have another plan? And this fable says Jesus looked at the angels and said, I have no other plan. That's it. So God has given us a wonderful assignment. And as we come to the e week before Easter, that assignment is even more intensified, even more illuminated as we come to this time in the season of our lives where people will come to Christ. So it's a boot camp. God is going to discipline us. We've got to dig deep sometimes. We'll be training. 
we'll be repenting, we'll be understanding, we'll be forgiving. So many things come up in our lives. So there's going to be seasons when you're healthy, God is going to send you out. There's other seasons you're coming in, and he's going to mend you. Let me finish with two stories of people prior to them coming to Christ. The first in uh, our church when we first started, I was only 30-something years old, and uh, I, I met a man that came, and this man was, had a very different lifestyle. He has uh, six kids from four different women, and as far as we know, he only has six kids that he knows of. He would go after Playboy bunnies, flight attendants. He was a beach boy. He would go after, sometimes he takes his kids to the beach and forget them in the van overnight, and they would sleep there overnight all alone, waiting for him to come back from his escapade with some woman that he met. For some reason, he came to our church in Hilo and maybe looking for another woman, I don't know. But he had kind of a different sense of humor, and I just started to like him, and we got to know each other. And, and one day, in the midst of all of this stuff, he would, he would come to a point where in the middle of a sermon, he just knew that God was speaking to him, and he received Christ. And at an early age, I remember baptizing him, and here's a picture of him being baptized in a pool there. And we called him Oku because his last name was Okuma. And so he grew and grew and, and started sending tapes to his daughters and, and, diff and different members of his family saying, you got to listen to this, you got to hear this. And little do we know that one of his daughters is Lori Higashi and Pastor Guy, who's a part of this church. And you look back on it now and you say, you know, if we hadn't loved this man before he came to Christ, what would be the residual change? How many people's lives would have been adversely affected? But you love them until they ask you why. And then God does something, and you look back on it, and you think, ah. It was some years later that I would ask Pastor Guy and Lori to come here to Oregon and help with this church. And we don't realize that it all started way back then with a man before he knew Christ and just needed someone to believe in him and love him. And then look at all of the residual that has happened. Lori's sister, her half-sister, is our chef at the college today and cooks for our students. And you think, wow. All of that would have been different today. It was uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago where I had a heart attack. I was paddling out in the ocean, and all of a sudden, my left arm went numb, and I couldn't put the paddle in the ocean another time. It was so painful. And I stopped, and I was all alone in a 20-foot carbon fiber racing boat because I was doing some open ocean racing at that time, and, and I couldn't paddle one more paddle. It hurt every time I put the paddle in the ocean. It's like, ow. And I thought, I'm going to die in the middle of the ocean here. Until one of my friends noticed that I hadn't come in. And so they started backtracking, called the uh, rescue. And uh, they were out there, the ocean rescue people uh, were ready to launch their boats. And he found me out in the middle of the ocean and put a strap on my canoe and pulled me back in. I was flown to Stanford. I have eight stents in my heart. I didn't even know I have that many vessels in my heart. And uh, so when I came back to Oregon uh, to rest, because we had a little family farm here, I just needed to rest for about three months. The doctor said, you just need to chill. So I went to another, it was actually a, psych, a counselor, like a psychologist, and he said, Wayne, you have way too much stress in your life. You've got to find something that'll take stress off. And I said, well, what? He said, therapy. Like what? He said, you know, horses are really good for therapy. They put special ed kids on them. You know, I thought, well, thanks a lot. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I resemble that. So, so I found a horse, and uh, the lady was going to give me a discount because the horse bucked her off. And so I thought, cool, I'll get it for a discount. And I always remember a green horse and a green rider equals black and blue. So... <laughs> So I said to a friend, is there anybody that, that can train my horse for me? And the lady said, yeah, I've got somebody. So they sent me to a person who 
said, hey, I'll train your horse, but more so I'll train you to train your horse. And so I said, great, I've got three months off. So, so I got this horse, and uh, uh, so I went to a man whose name was Tom Eichhorn. And uh, in fact, it was you guys, Richard, and uh, you, yeah, Sherry, that told me about Tom. So non-Christian guy, and, uh, but he was funny, a little strange. But, <laughs> but we hit it off and became really good friends. And about, oh, six, eight months later, um, I was flying back and forth to Hawaii every month, going back and forth. And uh, I said, Tom, why don't you come over and let's, uh, you come over for our Easter service. So he said, okay. And so we brought him over to Easter. And I remember after that Easter service, we went and had coffee at Starbucks. And uh, I remember saying to Tom, is there any reason you wouldn't receive Jesus? He said, no, I'd like to. And I remember praying with he and Leanne to receive Christ. And today, he's the head of our security here at the church. And this is a picture of us teaching how to do devotions as part of our church. That's what we do here. And I look back on it now, and I think, you know, God loved him and loved us to hold him valuable even before he knew Christ because God could see the future and knew that we would need someone like him to head up security here in a church that was yet to be pioneered 20-some years later. And God knew that. And, you know, if... If we don't see people as valuable even before they know Christ, do you know how different our futures might be? But if we'll see them as valuable, that God has a plan for them, that Jesus died for them even when they didn't know Christ, and we follow through with it, one day we will all look back and say, God's plan was absolutely amazing, even though we didn't know about it. And the best thing we can do is to go with our core value number one, that every person, Christian and non-Christian alike, is valuable to the kingdom of God. That's what we want to be a part of. That's the kind of church we want to be. Can you say amen to that? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Let's stand together as we conclude. We're going to sing our final song. Thank you so much for the many of you that uh, have chosen to be a part of serving at the Easter um, program. So some of you are driving shovels, some of you are, are d working with children, some of you are cleaning, setting up chairs, ushering, greeting. We need a ton. So if you can come to a service and then come to another and serve, that would be really, really cool. Really cool. It's in Luke 22. It says this, the greatest among you shall be your servant. I thought, the greatest? If you're a servant, you want to become a CEO. You don't want to be a servant. No, no, the greatest among you. And then he says this, and I will be found among those who serve. I thought, what? You see, if Jesus came to hang out here, he wouldn't hang out with the high mucky mucks. He would hang out with the servants. He'd be setting up chairs. And you know, if all of us would be servants when people come here, they'll see Jesus hanging out everywhere. How many ushers do we have here? Ushers? Three, four, okay. Now everybody raise your hand. How many ushers do we have? Yeah, we can all usher. How many greeters do we have? Yeah, everybody raise your hand. Yeah, because you can greet, you can smile, you can welcome people. And if all of us were greeters and all of us were ushers, and if Jesus hangs out with the servants, when people come, they're going to see Jesus everywhere. And that's who they need to see. So let's do that this, Chris, uh, this Easter, this Christmas as well, this Christmas as well. I like Christmas, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Would you reach out, take a hold of the person's hand next to you, like we're going to pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us, even when we rejected you, for being faithful, even while we were yet faithless for loving us when we didn't love you. But yet you loved us in spite of our unloving heart and it changed us. You loved us into the kingdom. Help us to do the same. I know it's not the easiest, but Lord, you did that with us and you'll give us the anointing and strength to do that with others. 
So, Father, thank you for these on either side of us. We pray over Easter. We ask that you would bring people to the throne of God, that they would receive you, and, and that we can follow up on them, teach them, help them to grow in you. We thank you for that. We love you dearly. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say, Amen. would you thank the Lord right now? Let's sing our final song. Here we go. Let's sing our final song. Oh, God. Oh, God, my God. someone a hug on your way out, would you please? brings me to tears just thinking about just where we were before mm -hmm. Christ got a hold of our hearts mm -hmm. and you know he loved us and died for us even when we were his mm -hmm. enemies yeah. none of us are worthy and deserving of what he's done yet he invites us yeah. to be his children and That's, that is so powerful it's the beauty of the gospel that mm -hmm. God isn't asking perfection of us no. to approach him he's uh, as pastor wayne would say he takes all the steps it takes to get to us we just have to take that the last, last step mm -hmm. towards him Amen. and so i love it i, I love, love it that. and really that it that is the heart of why people are so valuable to mm -hmm. god why they have to be eternally valuable yeah. to us as well mm -hmm. and you know no matter where you come from no matter your walk and what you've done or you're we're not defined by what we've done we're mm -hmm. defined by what he's yeah. done and that the hope that we have, the hope mm -hmm. that we all have, even yeah. people who you are praying for right now, that you feel like maybe are beyond hope. No one, mm. no one, the arm of the Lord is not, you know, he's, he's, he's able to save. It's not yes. too short. Yeah. It's his timing is perfect. Yeah. And we he get to overruns have, us with his love. Yes. And we get to have hope. Yeah. and continue to pray. And I know so many of you are praying for people that you are inviting to yeah. this Easter service yeah. to hear the gospel, maybe for the first time. You know, you're sowing those seeds. They're just an invitation away. They're just an invitation away. And so continue to contend mm -hmm. for those people mm -hmm. that you love that are far from God because he is not far from them. Yeah, He's not, and he's not far from any of us. No, and he demonstrates that he's not far from any of us by placing us, mm -hmm. his ministers, mm -hmm. in all of the communities that we belong to yeah. and and that's a beautiful thing too to mm -hmm. remember that christ's love and his power have invested us to be his ministers Amen. dressed up as nurses yep. as firefighters yep. as uh, school teachers mm -hmm. as neighbors you know, everything <laughs> yeah exactly and so we're all a minister yes Amen. and we all get to share the love of christ mm -hmm. through uh, a small word through a prayer through um just a hello a simple yeah. greeting a smile mm -hmm. that can be sufficient to somebody who just is needing a touch of the lord and so you too can be god's hands and feet in your community yep. wherever you are we're all ministers yep. and we get to share the love of jesus to our neighbors amen and people truly just need a touch from god and yeah. that makes all the difference in the world and so if you are one of those people who experienced the love of god even for the first time where mm. you said i need to give my life to christ what i've been doing this whole time running from God, yeah. I realized that actually I need him. And <laughs> all the things I've been trying yeah. to fill my life with up to this point have just been so broken and empty, have fallen yeah. short and only he can fulfill me. And yeah. you might not even understand everything there is to know. I mean, mm -hmm. we've been walking with Jesus for a while and I'm still <laughs> learning every yeah, single we're day. All learning. But taking that first step of faith and saying yes to Christ, if that was you, please let us know in the mm -hmm. comment section. We want to reach out to you, want to pray with you. We want to follow up with you. Because 
because yep. walking with Jesus is the greatest journey, but you're not meant to do it alone. No, we're one big family. Mm -hmm. We're a family everywhere and anywhere. Yep. And so allow us to be a family to you. Yes. Uh, email us at info at newhopewest.org. Yep. Dot com. Or dot com. <laughs> just kidding. Newhopewest.com. And just allow us to be that family to you, that helping yep. hand so that we can walk uh, mm -hmm. shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand yep. uh, in this uh, faith journey yes. in Christ Jesus. It's the best. Mm -hmm. Well, family, we can't wait to see you next week. Please be praying yep. for our services. We are praying for you and for all those seeds that you have planted that the Lord would bring in a huge harvest Amen. into his kingdom. That's and so we right. can't wait to see you again Saturday on March 30th at mm -hmm. 3, yep. 5, and 7 p.m. Pacific time and Sunday the 31st at 7 30 9 30 and 11 30 and until then happy Palm Sunday yep. and God bless you